Behold, a certain young maiden did oft times and at strange hours greatly desire a pizza. This would often happen in the second or the third watch when home delivery was not available. At such times, there would be much weeping and gnashing of teeth because she could not have the desire of her heart. And so she spake thus with herself, If I would but learn to make my own pizza, then when the desire cometh upon me in the night hours, I shall be able to have pizza straight away without waiting for the pizza merchants to reopen when the cock groweth. The following day, she sought out the school of one Papa Giuseppe, who gave instruction on the making of pizza. The maiden had not long been in the presence of her new master before she learned that a pizza base consisteth wholly of flour, water, yeast, salt, and sugar. Because she was loath to wait continually upon her master for the many hours of study that he required of his disciples, she departed from his presence straightway after hearing of the ingredients. When she was in her own home, she did search until she had found all of the necessary items, and she put an equal measure of each into a large earthen vessel and did eat from it. Ha! <laughs> she explained as the ingredients spewed forth from her mouth. The truth is not in my master, she reasoned with herself. This food tasteth badly of salt and yeast. I will go to him and remonstrate him for his deception. I have not wronged you, said the good master, when he had heard the maiden's story. If you had continued steadfastly in my word, like my true disciples have done, you would have learned the correct measure for each of those ingredients. The maiden was humbled beyond measure by this new revelation. Surely I was too impatient when Master Giuseppe, she said. I will return to his class a second time and hear more of what he has to say. And so she listened once again to the words of the great pizza maker until she was fully instructed in the ways of weights and measures. She did hide all these things in her heart and on the notepad in her laptop computer. After which she made haste to leave the classroom and return home once again. There, she made use of that which she had learned from the master. Her weights and her measurements were without equal throughout all the land. But lo, her labors failed yet a second time, for that which she produced was of the nature of silly putty. It did take the shape of whatsoever vessel wherein it had been placed. My hand runneth over, she said upon trying to pick up a piece of the pizza. And upon biting into it, there was not the familiar crunch in which her soul had taken such delight in days gone by. Instead, her mouth was filled with softness, and the taste was that of the glue which the scribes do use when binding their books. She returned to her master, greatly distressed, and did inquire as to why he had taught her such untruths. But I have not misled you, said the kindly Giuseppe. The mixture must first be cooked before it is meat for human consumption. Alas, the poor maiden was humbled yet again. Nevertheless, though she returned many times to the master's feet, each time she learned a new truth, she believed that she was his equal and that she had no further need to learn from him. Because of this, her learning was painfully slow. Now there were certain other foolish students like herself who hurried off to try what they had learned from Papa Giuseppe as well. But when their pizzas fell short of the glory that they had so desired, they cast aside all hope of making pizzas and returned to peanut butter sandwiches instead. Their hearts became hardened against the good Papa and they blamed him for their failures. When it was these foolish students themselves who were the cause of their own problems. Our young maiden was foolish for not being faithful in her attendance at the pizza-making classes, but she was less foolish than her equals because she returned to learn more when her own understanding failed. So learn a lesson from the foolish young maiden. Follow your master faithfully. Do not stray from his side until you have hidden in your heart all that he hath to say. And learn likewise from the wisdom of the foolish young maiden. 
For if you should stray from the way, do not heap scorn on your master or those whom he may have used to show you some small part of the truth. If your efforts fail, return to him and learn again the hidden truths that can only be learned by one who is of a broken and a contrite heart. So what can we learn from this parable? The number one lesson is just to slow down and listen to the master, right? Isn't that the number one lesson I'm always harping on here on A Voice in the Desert? I keep saying we need to listen to Jesus. Read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? You remember me saying something like that a time or two? Listen to Jesus. I can tell you haven't read the teachings of Jesus when you can't even tell me a dozen things that he told his followers to do. And I can tell you've never given a thought to actually obeying the teachings of Jesus when you flip out because I keep repeating, very bluntly, what he said about money. So let's look at this pizza parable. The girl wants to learn how to make pizza. If you asked her, she would have said that she wanted with all her heart to make pizza. But did she? And was she as sincere as she might claim she was? She wanted pizza. I won't argue with that. She definitely and sincerely wanted pizza. Just like you want to go to heaven, don't you? You might say, I sincerely want with all my heart to go to heaven. It's just that you don't want it badly enough to stop and listen to the one that you absolutely have to listen to if you're ever going to get there. And the one that you absolutely have to believe if you're ever going to get there. Maybe it's just that you're in too much of a hurry, like she was. Some of you want to be teachers before you've even heard what the grandmaster teacher has to say. So you pick up some snippet from the recipe. Ha <laughs> ha, John 3.16. Someone told you to just learn that verse and it's all you need. Or you pick up a few other proof texts. You learn them in Sunday school. Or you learn them in midweek Bible studies. You learn even more in Bible schools and seminaries, but always it's snippets. And here's the worst part. Most of you are not even learning those snippets from Papa Giuseppe anymore. What you're learning, you got from another chef. Gordon Ramsay, maybe. Or some other big name. And before you know it, your pizza has truffles and squid and some other exotic ingredients, new artistic shapes and garnishes and ingredients. Stuff that just doesn't do the trick, like good old pepperoni and cheese from the great Papa. Now I want to make something clear here. I don't think anyone, not me, not Francis Chan, not the first Christians, not even the martyrs. Nobody has ever perfectly matched Papa's recipe. Do you know you don't have to get it perfect to make a pretty decent pizza? And you don't have to perfectly follow Jesus to get to heaven. Hey, did I say that? Yes, I did. And I hope you all heard me. It's why Jesus died on the cross. Not so you can break the rules, but so that he can make up the difference when we fall short of perfection, even though we're trying to get the recipe perfect. Not one of us has all the answers, but at this point in history, we have more of the answers available to us than at any other time in human history. We have the four gospels in virtually every language on earth, but what are we doing with them? There have been many places on earth and times in history when people did not have the gospels, and still it seems, they did a better job than we're doing with all that we have now. The recipe is here, folks, in these four books, clearer than ever before, in black and white, sometimes even in red and white. But who's using it? We all make our own rules. I can do more for God by making money. And with that, we drop a great big dollop of cow dung right in the middle of our pizza. It goes on from there. I think God needs me to get a university degree. I think he wants me to get a farm and grow food for the hungry. I think he needs more Christian politicians. See, don't blame God if things don't work out as you would have liked them to work out. Go back and read the recipe. Read it a bit more carefully this time. Like your eternal destiny depends on it. It doesn't depend on you getting it perfect, but it may depend on you trying to get it perfect. You hear that? It's so important. Not on getting it perfect, but on trying to get it perfect. So it's over to you. What are you going to do about it? If you're serious about listening to Jesus, I would love to hear from you today. I may be able to put you in touch with others who are doing the same thing in your area of the world. My address is on the screen right now. Please write to me today, sharing something about your own spiritual journey, where you come from, 
and whether or not you're willing to give up everything you own to have a genuine, four gospels relationship with Jesus. I'm looking forward to receiving your email. Thank you.